Welcome back to the channel, everyone. On today's episode, we'll be previewing the season of Detroit Pistons franchise centerpiece, Kay Cunningham, and we'll do so by breaking down the episode into four different sections. First of all, we'll recap Kay's season from last year. Then we'll go through his predicted role and output for the upcoming season. We'll then talk about the biggest weakness he needs to work on, and we'll close out today's episode with my hot take for Cade's fourth season in the NBA. But before we get into that, I'm your host, Jack Kelly. You can follow me over on all social media platforms at Pistons underscore Jack. And if you're feeling so kind, please hit that subscribe button and please like the episode, comment. It all helps and I appreciate all of it. So let's get into it. Kay Cunningham. Uh, I've been excited to do this preview because as you can see on the title of this episode, I'm going to talk about why Kay Cunningham will be an all-star this season. And I think for the first time in the last couple of seasons, it's a realistic possibility entering his fourth year. Uh, but we'll talk about kind of Cade's last season. And there's some elements of last season that give me confidence that he's a real chance to become an all-star this season if the Pistons are just a relatively competent team. Uh, but last season, as you can see, 23 points a game, four rebounds, seven and a half assists, 45% from the field, 35% from three. And he did so on the worst team in franchise history and one of the worst NBA teams of all time. And I'm not going to completely give Kay a pass for last season. I've spoken about it a lot. There was some times for me last season where I thought Kay just needed to put this team on his back and get them a win during that streak. And he had a couple of 40-point games in that 28-game losing streak. Uh, a couple of 40-point games in that 28-game losing streak. But, uh, yeah, he has, whilst the roster was horrible last season, whilst the coaching was far from ideal, to put it kindly, uh, he does have a, 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 a – he was a key contributor. Like, he's the guy. So this team losing 28 games when he was relatively healthy throughout that stretch is like, you know, that sticks on his resume. And, you know, I'm not going to – uh, absolve him completely of that, but it's time for a fresh slate. And I think last season he showed that he's a guy that can take the other team's best defender and still put up numbers, uh, still be, uh, you know, even with like literally no shooting and no spacing around him, he was able to put up, uh, you know, those are all-star numbers. Like, and the efficiency increase was really encouraging to see. He still needs to get that field goal percentage up around 48% or higher, in my opinion. The three-point percentage, honestly, if he stays around 35 to 36 on the type of threes he takes, like I'm I think that's actually like pretty decent. Obviously, there's always room for improvement. Like if he could get that to 38%, like that's huge. If he gets to 40%, like now we're really talking about like a number one option. Uh and, and that's still an area like you want to see him improve. But uh, I think like considering where he was in his rookie season and then for the, you know, the short sample we saw in him in year two to see the shooting come around because even though in year two, he only played like 12 games um, and he had some huge games within those 12 games, but he never got the three ball going. I think he shot below 30% in his second season, very small sample size, but to see the three ball really come around last season off the dribble, um, off the catch, it still needs to improve, but that was really encouraging because Ever since his days at Oklahoma State, like you felt like Caddy was a shooter. He felt like he's a guy who could get to his spot in the mid range and knock down shots. And I think he proved last year like he can do that and he's just going to get better at that. So I think though he set, whilst it was such a horrible season, I think Cade set a really solid, impressive foundation on the offensive end to really thrive this year with a better supporting cast around him, with much more shooting and spacing around him. And just on a team that, you know, I would say the roster the Pistons have this season is the best he's, like, I know we haven't seen them hit the floor, but in terms of talent on paper, this is the best roster Cade's had since entering the NBA. It's definitely the roster that's made the most sense. The only other roster uh, that I think has, you know, that, come second on the out of his four seasons was his rookie season, like with Jeremy Grant, Trey Lars as a stretch five, uh, Sadiq Bay when he was shooting the ball well. Like still not an ideal lineup, still a bottom four team in the league, bottom five team, whatever. But like that team had 
you know, they had Jeremy Grant, a veteran. They had like Corey Joseph, like kind of made a little bit of sense for a really a rebuilding team, which is what the Pistons were in his rookie season. But I think this team this season has by far and away the most shooting and, you know, the most talent he's played with. So I think with what he showed last season on some of those stretches where he had, you know, like he really got into a habit last season of scoring high 20s and getting into the 30s. Like, whereas I feel like as a rookie, that was much more um, infrequent and, you know, that's to be expected. But I really, I felt like last season he really established himself as a scorer um, and the turnovers were really bad the first two months of the season, but they came down. So uh, whilst it was a horrible, horrible season for Pistons fans to endure and players alike last year, I think Cade kind of, he made me at least feel like no matter what, and I always felt like this, but I feel like it was cemented particularly because we just hadn't really, like year two was almost a write-off completely. Like we just needed a season like that from K to be like, all right, no matter what, taking him at pick one was the right choice. And we, we all wanted that. But also he's a he's an absolute cornerstone. And you, you see this summer he signs that max extension. And I think there was never a question about whether that should be signed or whether he was going to sign that. But I feel like from what I saw last season, He's worth that. He's definitely at least a number two guy, and I think he can be a number one guy. But regardless, you build your team around him and you go from there. And let's get Cooper Flag this summer. But moving on, predicted role for this upcoming season, I don't think a lot needs to be said here. Like, I think he's – I literally don't need to talk about it. Like, he's the starting point guard. He's the best part of the team. He's going to be the leading scorer. Uh I think he's going to average 24 points a night, maybe 25. I think he's going to average seven. I think his assists could even go up with the added shooting. Um, and with how little ball handlers this team has, like, honestly, Cade's the only true point guard on this team. Like, he really is. There's no backups. There's nothing. So I think his assists, like, I, I don't want to see him playing, like, over 40 minutes a night, but I think his pure usage, like, he's going to have the ball all the time so i think he's going to put up big numbers you hope the efficiency can stay but uh yeah i think we're just going to see an even more Cade centric offense this season which i think that's what he wants like there was talk when he was a rookie of him being a bit of an off-ball scorer but i think the way i've watched k play and develop particularly last year like i think he wants to be I'm not going to say that heliocentric Luka Doncic type, but I think he definitely leans that way more than more of like a Jason Tatum, like wing version. Um, so and Jason Tatum still has a ball heaps, but I just feel like Cade's like, he's a point guard. He's not a wing. He's not an off-ball guy. Like he's, when he's on the floor, 80% of the time he's going to have the ball on offense. So that's who I think he is. That's what I think his role will be. Um, and then Kind of moving on here, the biggest area for improvement. Now, Cade, whilst I've seen his praises here, like I still think he has heaps to improve upon, which I think is exciting because uh, like he is so far from a finished product in my eyes. Like, and and it's for that reason, like I think he's really capable of becoming an all-star this season because I think with a much better supporting cast around him. And and when I say supporting cast, like for me, yes, the talent is the best it's been. But it's just more about like the lineups you can put around him and the shooting and the spacing you can give him to be the best version of himself because that's what we haven't had in the first three seasons. Like very rarely has he had consistently like night in, night out lineups that actually, you know, elevate him and give him the platform to be his best version. And most of that comes from just putting you know, real shooters around him, guys that actually draw defenders. That's why people are going to clown the Pistons for the Tim Hardaway Jr. thing because he struggled in the playoffs and whatever. I get that. But Tim Hardaway is a guy, no matter what NBA defenses are going to account for. The same is said for Tobias Harris. People will clown the Pistons for that signing because he struggled in the playoffs. And yes, he did struggle in the playoffs. But the Pistons playoffs aren't, you know, this season the playoffs aren't, the goal like they're just not like the Pistons want to win as many games but Trajan said it yesterday like this team it's not about finishing somewhere in the standings they want to win as much as they can but it's about continuing to develop continuing to build a base like they've just you need to understand like they've got a whole pretty much a whole new coaching staff at least on like the front of bench and the main assistants um and then the front office has completely changed it feels like for the most part and then the roster's changed like a reasonable amount. So like 
I look at this as a rebuild as restarting, but they're just at a, a uh, further into it. But I feel like, yeah, in terms of wins and losses, like that shouldn't be the, how this season is measured. And I know I got a bit off track there, but like I was saying, like Tobias Harris, people will cl clown the Pistons for that signing because of his postseason struggles. But you know what? He's a guy that gives you 18 to 22 every single night, six rebounds, four assists, and maybe a steal here or there. Like having that consistency and players that actually NBA defenses account for on the perimeter, is going to absolutely open up his game. And um, when we talk about biggest areas for improvement, like I think for K, I'm just going to give one, like I think defense, it's not about like for K, kind of awareness or uh, positioning as such. For Cade, I think it's more about just being more locked in on that end, like just effort. Like I think he's shown throughout college, through even out his NBA career, like as a rookie, I thought he had some really good moments as a defender. Um, but I think on that end, it's just effort and, and, and like put simply, like just getting more reps in um, and, you know, overcoming fatigue um, on that end because I think – He's got all the physical tools, 6'6", six, six, as you can see here on the screen, seven-foot wingspan. Like when he locks in, I think he can be an above-average defender in the NBA. He might lack a bit of athleticism, but he's certainly got the strength now and the size. So uh, I think I'd love to see him. Like I think it's – with the way this team's set up, I think it's unreasonable to expect Kate to be like some – lockdown defender or a guy like slapping the floor every defensive possession and locking up the other teams like – first or second best wing, like I think that's unrealistic with the offensive load. But I don't also want to see like him falling asleep, him kind of letting his man just blow by him all the time. Like I want to see more consistent effort. And I think we'll get that on a team that's uh, – on a JB Bickerstaff team for a start, but on a team that's more competitive. Uh, and then on offense, I think for Kade, you know, I th I'm – comfortable with where his jump shot is and where his pull-up game is so from like mid-range to three-point line like if he can just sustain that and improve incrementally from each season from now on i think he's going to be fine um for me it's in the paint it's uh finishing around the rim it's getting to the free throw line and it's that float game and he spoke about that um he was asked that at uh media day by kuka hill great question shout out the coup as usual um just if like that's something he's worked on and Cade said, absolutely. The float game in particular, something he's been working on. Cade actually said like, he said like something he realized from last season and is that like he a lot of the time was taking tough shots at the rim because he was trying to use his body first to create space to get layups off. And that resulted in a lot of tough shots over bigger guys instead of kind of having the confidence to shoot that float game and avoiding the contact. Um, so, you know, I think we're going to see it, that floater being used more this season. And uh, But then getting to the free throw line, I always struggle with this one because absolutely we want Kate getting to the free throw line more. But three seasons in, it just hasn't been a thing. Like the refs, I know he's probably only really played two seasons worth of games, but he just hasn't been able to get to the free throw line enough for a guy of his size. So I'm not sure if it's just due to a lack of athleticism and like the way he drives the slower pace, but you know, guys like Luca and um, Harden aren't necessarily the most explosive athletes and they've been able to make a living at the free throw line. So, you know, hopefully he can pick up some tips and tricks from watching them. I know Luka Doncic, I think, is Kate's favorite player. He at least was coming into the league. So, you know, it'd be cool if he could adapt some of Luca's craftiness around the ring. Like, And I think some of that comes from, like, improved footwork, using pump fakes to get defenders off the feet. Like, it, uh, like... So, so maybe that doesn't come immediately this season. Maybe that's more of a long-term play for him as his game improves in and around the paint. But no matter what, I think that's where I want to see him improve the most um, offensively is finishing around the rim. I could say turnovers, but I feel like he kind of showed last season. Like he, he would even admit himself, like he struggled majorly to start the season. Like he was leading the league in turnovers. And um, I think he figured that out as the season went on. And I think like with the amount of usage he has, like, and how much this team's going to rely on him offensively. Like, unless he's dishing up, like, you know, five-plus turnovers consistently, like, I think three's okay. Like, what's the difference between, like, 2.6 and three? Like, I don't know. 
maybe maybe that's a bit careless for me, but just with how much he's going to have the ball, like I think it's inevitable he's going to be in the top five to ten for turnovers per game. And, you know, like I said, as long as he's not racking up eight a game or like kind of what Russell Westbrook can do at times, like I'm okay with it. I back his decision-making. It's more just those careless passes sometimes he throws that don't have enough power in them. But um, anyway, rambling, but I get excited talking about Kate. He's the guy. So finally, I'm going to wrap it up here talking about a hot take. I've got my hot take for Cade being all NBA third team. And there's a lot of things it's going to take that are probably out of Cade's control for him to get that position. But I think if he is playing at, you know, an all-star level, it will be because the Pistons are surprising some people. Like if he's genuinely getting all-star bars, it's going to be because this team is winning more games than people expected. And honestly, like sometimes all it takes, in my opinion, to make the all-star game is like, if you just come out of the gate, like, and you start, if you have like a really, like if you're turning heads in the first five to 15 games of the season, maybe let's say, let's just say first 15 games of the season, if Kate comes out blazing, averaging like 25, nine assists, um, shooting the ball well, Pistons, you know, they might not have, of those 15 games, they might have won six, but like, you know, they're in games like, I kind of feel like sometimes that's all it takes with a narrative to get Kate into the all-star conversation. And then it's just about maintaining that. Um, you know, I feel like that's definitely the case with the rookie of the year and how that tends to work. Um, so I think all-star, like, I think that was, that's not a hot enough take for me. So I think all NBA third team, you know, the guard position is stacked, but you know, you can slide Kate in at the three, like in an all NBA team. I don't know. It's a hot take. If the Pistons make, say they finish with the eighth seed or they make the plane and then make the actual playoffs. And, you know, I could see it. I really could because I think the numbers are going to be there. The numbers are going to be impressive. And you could make the argument that, well, look, Cade's really the only true star on his team. He's been, his, his job's been harder than say someone else on the fringe, like not the best example, but they like, the Suns have an awesome season and like Bradley Beal goes off. It's like, you're probably going to pick Cade over Brad Beal because Brad Beal is the third option. So that's not the best example. It's just the first one that came to my mind. But um, yeah, all NBA third team is my hot take for Cade. I want to hear yours. I want to hear the answers to all my questions and sections here about Cade in the upcoming season because vibes seem good. You know, I, a media day yesterday, the vibes are high. So uh, Cade's the head of the snake. He said that in his own words, and I'm super, super excited to see what he puts together this season. And I'm just excited for us fans to potentially have an all-star to celebrate. Like we've had, what, since I've been a fan in 2012, like we've gotten Andre Drummond in 2016. I think then Andre was an injury replacement in 2018. And then we had Blake Griffin in 2019, like, you know, we've kind of been starved for all stars and uh, Blake was awesome. But apart from that, it's uh, been pretty dry in terms of superstar play. So really excited for Kate to elevate his game this season, get the attention he deserves and give us a player to really celebrate on the national stage. So that's going to do it for today's show. Um, drop your comments below on Kate's season. I'd love to hear them all. Um, and we're going to continue pumping out content. I'll be back tomorrow with another player preview video. Uh, but until then, as always, go Pistons.